Hello everybody, I am on Triple Seven slash Dodge Kebab. This is the history of id software. Yes, id software, not ID software, are the masterminds behind such legendary titles as Doom and Quake. But the history starts with a company called Soft Disk, which John Carmack, John Romero, game designer Tom Hall, and artist Adrian Carmack, no relation, all were working for at the time. John Romero, having played Super Mario 3 on the NES, decided that he wanted to make a game in the same style and began to work on a game called Dangerous Dave in copyright infringement, which, as you can see, is a copy and paste job of Super Mario 3, but for MS-DOS. John Carmack saw what Romero was working on, and after talking to Tom Hall and Adrian Carmack, still no relation, they went off to form id Software. Romero's experience making Dangerous Dave carried over to id's first game, which was called Commander Keen. Commander Keen was a 2D side-scrolling game, which as you can see here, it, and it's worth noting that the game was published by Apogee, I think that's how they pronounce, who became 3D Realms, who created Duke Nukem. Anyway, years later Commander Keen also was released on the Game Boy Color. Its next title would be the Breakthrough Wolfenstein 3D in 1992. It featured groundbreaking graphics for the time and was a huge success with players. Although the Nazi theme of the game saw it and future id games banned from German release. Wolfenstein was ported to many other systems including the Super NES, Atari Jaguar and Game Boy Advance as well as many others. Wolfenstein got a prequel release in 1992 called Spear of Destiny which had, had the story based around Hitler's real life attempt to find the fabled Spear of Destiny which is said to have Jesus' blood on from the time of the crucifixion. In 2001, Id returned to, return to Castle of Wolfenstein which featured a popular multiplayer mode as well as a single player campaign. In 1993, Wolfenstein's follow-up, Doom, proved to be an even bigger hit than the previous game. Doom featured far more detailed graphics with greatly improved level design. Doom was popular with modders at the time, and many Doom mods po popped up in internet news groups. The Simpsons, Sonic the Hedgehog, and even the Ghostbusters are just a few to mention of the many mods that have been made. These mods still continue to be made to this day, and even games like Modern Warfare 2 have been crafted into Doom mods. Doom was ported to many different platforms like the Super NES, Sega 32X, Toga Jaguar, and even a fan port to the ZX Spectrum. Doom had a highly popular sequel cleverly titled Doom 2 in 1994. That featured a new weapon, a whole raft of new levels to play as well. Other games in the Doom series include Final Doom, Doom RPG, and in 2004, Doom 3 was released. Released in 1996, Quake was id's next big hit at the time and was fully 3D, whereas Doom had featured a 3D world populated by 2D sprites, in Quake everything was crafted using polygons and gave a fully 3D effect. Like Doom, Quake was popular with the modding community and many different mods for Quake sprang up online. Quake's popularity continued with the likes of Quake 2, which polished the graphics up even further, and then further still with Quake 3 Arena, which shifted the gameplay focus to a deathmatch style of game. Quake also has a convention in its name in the form of QuakeCon, which started in 1996, that players from all around the world would attend to duel to win cash prizes. There was also Quake 4, which returned the game to its story-based action gameplay style, and that was released in 2005. After the release of Quake in 1996, John Romero started up his own studio called Ion Storm and set to work on Daikatana. An advert for Daikatana circulated in the press near the game's release, which featured the words, John Romero is about to make you his bitch. The game had an inexperienced workforce behind it and suffered game engine changes along the way, which changed R Romero's original seven-month development schedule to three years. 
The game was received negatively by reviewers and gamers alike and has gone down as one of the most commercial failures in video game history. Rage brings us up to the present day pretty much and was released in October 2011 and features the sort of FPS quality gunplay that you'd expect from an id shooter but throws driving and exploration into the mix. Rage has a story which unfolds as the player plays through the game and was received positive, positively by games reviewers across the board. Although billed as from the makers of Doom and Quake, neither Carmack or Romero are credited with large input for the game.